Hey guys, it's Isaac. I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to pop in here and I don't know, just something, God placed something on my heart this week that I wanted to share with you. And uh, it's something that I've been thinking about and thinking about tonight. It is about exactly 12 o'clock at night. And uh, my city that I live in is still locked up for the coronavirus and I can't really go anywhere. And so I've been cooped up and I've been thinking a lot about productivity. It got me thinking about you guys. Like over the last couple of weeks, I've been getting some DMs and stuff like that. Just like you get some of you guys asking me to pray for you because you're doing, you know, there's finals coming up. There's there's deadlines, right? And especially in this time of life, like I, I feel it, right? I'm 21 and I know a lot of you guys are in that same age demographic. Like it feels like there's a lot of things uh, like you're trying to figure out your life and maybe you're at university or you're just trying to get in, you know, your foot in the door at a job you actually like, or you're trying to build your business. You're trying to figure out your life, right? And I know there's, there's obviously a lot more pulls as you get older, like kids, family, marriages, all that stuff. But even at this age, it feels like a lot, right? And a lot of us, let me just speak from my personal like experience in the mornings when I wake up, right? I'm partially self-employed and then partially I'm out of work right now because of the coronavirus. So when I wake up, my main goal is to like optimize the day as, as much as possible. Like I'm thinking productivity, right? Like scheduling everything so I make the most of the day. And there's kind of this like, that's a good sentiment, right? And, and there's this veneer in front of it that th this is good and this is responsible, right? But what I wanna to get to the heart of in our productivity and, and how we approach productivity is that there's there's something behind that, right? We gotta understand the fuel that's fueling that productivity because at least in my life, and I think based on what I've posted in the past and your guys' responses, I think it's, I think it's pretty widespread that shame tends to fuel our productivity. And, and, and it does that because when we have kind of unresolved shame, right? For the non-believer, they actually do like legitimately have unresolved shame because th that shame still rests on them. They have not found a savior, the savior that will take that shame off of them. And for the believer, it's like we have yet to truly step into the reality that Jesus has already taken that shame upon himself. Because when we still have that shame resting on us, when we, when we don't step into that new reality, that new identity, that we are free from that shame, we feel as though we can do something to resolve it. And often that comes down to work. It comes down to productivity, like proving myself to make up, to do something to make up for what I have done. And it's this kind of never ending cycle of trying to prove myself to God and prove myself to others and gain other people's love and acceptance because there's this deep seated guilt and shame that is yet to be resolved. And I think that's the case for a lot of us. And if that, I want you to search your heart to see if that's the case for you because I think you may find, look, there's some unresolved shame here. I still feel like I need to prove myself to God and that's what's leading me to to really just like treat productivity as an idol, as if it is my savior, as if it, it is the, the, the delivering force that's gonna get me to the place where I can feel good about my life, where I can feel like I'm enough finally. And I think there's, there's something that I wanted to talk about for a while in terms of like this idea of whether we are enough, right? Because within kind of Christianity as a whole, even on social media, you'll get two very different messages, right? You'll get the message like you are not enough. You are a garbage. Like you are not like a worm before God, right? And then you you get the message that you are enough. Like you're, you're perfect just the way you are and, and you don't need to change anything and, and you're just great, right? And this is what I want to say to that. In the moral sense, we are not enough. We see that in the Bible, Romans 3.23, for all of a sudden fallen short of the glory of God. We have fallen short of God's standard and we are not enough in that sense, right? But then there's another sense that I want to reaffirm that God has has for the believer, he has invited you into his family, that he has given you a new identity. And through Christ, you are enough to accomplish what he has for you, right? And notice I said through Christ, like this isn't absent from Christ, but it's just to say that you're not a piece of garbage, right? You're not just like uh, a useless piece of trash. Like that's not true. God wants to use you. And in that sense, he has equipped you and he has made you in his image. And, and he hasn't left things out there. He, he's going to prepare you and to 
and to provide what you need to accomplish those things. But this productivity idea that we can somehow prove ourselves to God on our own or that we can make up and really just kind of resolve the shame on our own, like it's a really... It's just a, it's a lackluster attempt to be saved from all that is wrong within us. Because when you accomplish something, you feel good. Like, I think that's by design. That's God designed that when your productivity and you're just feeling good and excited and you feel good about yourself. Like, I'm getting things done. Like, this is meaningful. I'm doing something worthwhile. Like, I have value because I produce something. But then when you don't, when you don't have the, you know, you uh, like today, right? I woke up today and I got up a little bit later than I wanted to. Already felt like trash. Like, how could I do this? Like, I'm such a piece of garbage. Like, whoa, like I should get up earlier. I'm wasting this time. And then I try to start working and then I have no ideas and I'm in like a mental fog. And, and it, and that shouldn't be the case, right? Our self-worth and all that shouldn't be just attached to what grade we get, what our paycheck looks like, how much we produce, all those things, all the things that we want to do and, and become and who we are, that should all be an outflowing of our identity. And when our identity isn't tethered to Christ, to Jesus, to what he has done, we are on sinking sand. So whether we're trying to resolve this, this unresolved shame or guilt in our heart, or trying to find some sort of sense of purpose or meaning, if our identity isn't tethered to the one who created me, I'll always be disconnected from who I'm supposed to be. And that's why when you think about productivity, I want you to continue to reaffirm who you are in Christ. When you're doing your homework, when you're doing your, um, your work for the day, understand this, that that work does not define you, that the results of that work do not define you, that people's perspective of that work does not define you. That is only Christ. It is only Christ who defines you. And because of that, we can approach every single situation, every task, every opportunity with joy, knowing that even if we experience negativity, rejection, all that stuff, we can handle it because our identity isn't intricately connected to those things. It's connected to Christ. And people can't shake that. They can't break that connection. They may break my connection with my work or my connection with, with my influence or, or my connection with um, my paycheck, but they can't break my connection with God. And that is what will sustain us. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you found that helpful, encouraging, all that. Leave me a comment down in the, the comments because <laughs> that's where you put comments um, with your thoughts on all this. I would love to hear from you. I so enjoy getting to talk to you guys every single week. And if you want to help support my ministry that is all dedicated to helping you follow Jesus daily, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. We have 25 patrons right now. The goal is to get to 50 patrons by the end of the year. And by supporting me, Five bucks a month, you can help me get closer to that goal. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you next time. God bless.